Historically, the pharma industry has gone out into the natural world to look for unique compounds that have some health benefit. If you're in the pharmaceutical industry, your intention is to come up with a new compound, some new entity, whether it's a small chemical or a protein, some new drug that can deliver a health benefit, that can treat or cure a disease, and that you can sell for a profit. Relax. Try the fastest relief known. Doctors prescribe most. The sooner you take it, the better you'll feel. Aspirin's a great example where Native American groups use this willow plant for pain and other issues. And eventually, Bayer, one of the first pharma companies in the late 1800s, they isolated some chemicals from this plant and they found the active component that actually delivered this pain alleviation effect. And then that became aspirin as we know it. I think it's 1880, United States Pharmacopeia, and it's this great big thick book, and it's all plants and minerals, and mercury and arsenic and stuff like that, but mostly plants. Every one of those plants was learned from a traditional person practicing indigenous medicine, either in Europe or Scandinavia or Russia or United States or Mexico. As soon as the American Medical Association is founded, that pharmacopeia went from this great big thick book to patent medicines. And they were things like mercury, cocaine, definitely isolated compounds, not whole plant medicine anymore. So you're seeing this really strong move against untrained physicians. So in other words, people who were in control of their own food and medicine and childbirth, it wasn't a profession. It was just something that was handed to you down the family and controlled by the community. And that's the key word here, is control. Because you can't make money out of something you can't control. You can't make money out of something that you can't patent. When you start looking at plants and naturally occurring chemicals, Big Pharma is always going to be thinking about what's patentable, what can be patented. In general, you can't patent nature. You can't patent a natural compound, which is why what the pharma industry often does is they'll pursue a naturally occurring compound, but then they'll modify the structure so that it's sort of their own private modification. So to follow the scientific path, to move from a novel chemical in a plant all the way through this clinical pipeline to an approved drug, you have to think in an incredibly reductive way. You're reducing a plant to a single compound, and then you want to see how that compound engages with your cell biology, with your physiology in the human body. That's incredibly reductive. <laughs>